Laser is updated about once a week, and chances are you never even noticed. So I had a talk with Peppy yesterday Hello. to super quickly explain the last update's biggest changes. Let's start with my uh, completely biased favorite, the editor. To match the old editor, clap and finish hit sound positions have been swapped, and new sliders inherit velocity from previous sliders. Yes, yeah, someone made a very um, loud complaint on Twitter with these two listed as the main concerns. Um, <laughs> more explicit language than that, but yeah, I went through and fixed these ones up. Plus, there's a few more timeline functionality fixes. On the timeline, we'll actually zoom in centered on that point rather than on the center of the timeline. I think it feels a bit better. And the other one is uh, fixing the zoom not being relative to song length, which is pretty self-explanatory, but also a pretty big quality of life fix. And most importantly, now you see this thing when saving a map. Everyone's favorite thing in the editor, I'm sure. Now onto gameplay. Laser's last update implemented failed replays, which then led to a mistake in score calculations. An oversight was that because it's a failed play, the miscount is less than the total misses, and the new score algorithm relies on having uh, every note either hit or miss. You know, maybe you failed with one miss, and that would make the score like 900,000 out of 1 million. Couldn't see the other misses. So yeah, that's fixed. I asked Peppy how often these sorts of oversights happen, and the answer was... Uh, every time. <laughs> I think that's a guarantee of adding new features. There's always going to be something that goes wrong, or someone that finds some weird edge case. The last laser update also changed animations for legacy skins. They're, they're different, believe me. Leading to this new update for modern follow circle animations. Meanwhile in Tycho, there is now touch controls. So this was a user contribution. It was basically taking the existing, the little Tycho drum to the left of the playfield and reusing that. It does allow interaction with the rim outside of the actual visualization area, so it gives you full screen touch support. Should feel pretty good. Um, it's, it's a temporary thing. We plan to add better customization to touch support to actually let you put buttons anywhere on the screen or customize the areas and stuff. But yeah, this is just a first step. And to match with the stable build of OS, legacy Tycho skins now meet expectations. Thanks, Frenzy. Frenzy Byte also disabled score multipliers for custom adjustments to mods. This is an issue that cropped up in beatmap spotlights recently. Players earned a 1.12 times score multiplier for playing with double time, except speed was only increased by 1.01 times, so it was just stupid. Let me just add with the mod one, this is just like the first fix. Uh, we also need to fix relax mod still, which is getting 100% multiplayer. And a lot of the other mods which are actually changing difficulty are currently at 1.0 multiplayer when they shouldn't be. We're just going to fix this as we go and apply it retroactively to any existing scores where we can or, you know, delete the scores if we need to. Also in song select, you can now sort and filter by ranked date. And finally, you can update beat maps. <laughs> this shouldn't be that revolutionary, but it is. Uh, this happens basically in real time. So when a user updates a beat map, it's going to pick up on that change within a few seconds. Uh, note that this still only accounts for changes to OSU files to the actual beat maps themselves. So if someone changed just the background of a beat map, it wouldn't pick up on that. But when you hit the update button, it does pull in all changes, unlike stable. So if someone did change the background and they also changed the beat map content, it will pick up on that and redownload the whole thing. And you might have noticed this thing down here too, an FPS counter, which was very, very complicated before. For those coming from stable, it should be pretty familiar. Tried to capture the same style of display and the same simplicity. The tooltip is very temporary. Uh, eventually, you're going to be able to hover this and get a list of details on any issues that your system or that OS is reporting. So you can hopefully self-diagnose, self-fix those issues. I think that's about it. Of course, there's a bunch of small changes too, which I am just not going to list. But I hope you like seeing them here in all their very, very limited time glory. Anyway, read the full change log if you're interested in absolutely everything. Thanks for listening, and I guess we'll see you in a week or two for the next update. I need to stop recording. Okay, bye.